SUVs, you love them, don't you? Don't tell my colleagues in the car journalism game, but I actually quite like them as well. Enough to buy one as our family runaround. I've had a BMW X5 now for a couple of years and I won't have a bad word said about it, it's brilliant. I've also been running a Mercedes GLE for a few months as a long-termer. You can check out the full review and the head-to-head -head between that and my BMW X5 in the links down below. But one of the questions that my petrol heads and my environmentally woke buddies always ask me, and it's a question that I often ask myself, when you actually weigh up the realities, are SUVs actually a bit stupid. They are popular, but it's fair to say that there's always been a bit of a backlash. Anti-car people hate them for the fact that they're a very obvious symbol of apparent planet-killing excess, be that in their sheer size, the assumption that they use far more fuel than regular cars, and the perception that their drivers prioritize their own egos and sense of personal security over that of other road users. The science does seem to back that up as well. A report from the 2019 International Energy Agency, a body created in the 70s to ensure the stability of oil supplies, apparently has gained a lot of traction across the mainstream media and basically blames our love of SUVs for undoing all the good work that's been done making cars more efficient. They say that global fuel economy has actually got worse in the last decade thanks to SUVs, and that they're responsible for the 3.3 million barrels per day increase in oil consumption between 2010 and 2018. There was an article in the Guardian newspaper that took that idea and ran with it, saying that if SUV drivers were a nation, they'd rank seventh in the world for CO2 emissions and were the second biggest contributor to increased global carbon output ahead of heavy industries, trucks, aviation and shipping and there's a place I wouldn't want to visit. And just a couple of months back, a think tank, the New Weather Institute, called for SUV advertising to be treated like the tobacco and alcohol industry, saying that car buyers had been manipulated into bad lifestyle choices and agencies should turn down briefs from car manufacturers that perpetuate the myth that SUVs are cool. Ouch. <laughs> Now, car nuts, and most motoring journalists do fit this description, hate SUVs because they also think they're wasteful, just for different reasons. They'll say that they take up too much road space, the tall ride height ruins the handling because you need really stiff springs to stop them wobbling about all over the place, and that the big wheels kill ride comfort, plus the bodywork that you need to accommodate them takes up loads of interior space, so they're actually less practical. You'll also hear that they cost too much, that they use too much fuel, list goes on. Doesn't look good, does it? The thing is, is this based on facts or on some sort of inverted snobbery against a very obvious target? I decided to crunch my own numbers to try and make sense of whether an SUV makes sense compared with a more traditional car of the same type and purpose, like a family estate car. I pulled up the stats for the GLE and the E-Class Estate, which basically serve the same purpose. Same car, one's an SUV, one's an estate. Now I picked the mid-power 300D 4MATIC with AMG Line Premium on both of these cars and set about seeing how they compare in terms of price, performance and running costs. The numbers are quite surprising. The GLE SUV is £68,000, the Estate £51,000 there's a £17,000 price difference. Now, that's not a normal discrepancy between SUVs and estates, but it is in this case, and it's quite eye-opening. I think you'll agree. Is the current GLE worth that much more than the current e-estate? Or are the sheeple that are buying these things just willing to pay that difference? Anyway, power in the SUV is 272 horsepower, seven more than the estate, but the SUV is a tiny bit slower with its 0 to 60 time, 6.8 versus 6.6. .6. The SUV is also much heavier. It weighs 2,280 kilograms, 270 kilograms more. That's the weight of three or four passengers. And the fuel economy is obviously not as good. 39.2 MPG versus 43.5 in the estate. 4.3 difference, not a lot on paper, but over the course of a fuel of tank, if both cars were filled up with the same amount, let's say 50 liters, you'd get 62 miles more out of every tank in the estate. And then there are CO2 emissions. The SUV's 26 grams worse per kilometer. Now, what about practicality? I checked this out as well, and they give you about the same boot space. 630 in the GLE versus 640 more in the estate. 
but you get the same room in the SUV when you fold the seats down. And speaking of seats, the GLE does have the option of seven seats. So in this case, the SUV is slightly the more practical car. The GLE can also tow three and a half tons, whereas the Estate can only tow about two. I don't know much about towing, but hand on heart as well, I can say the Estate is better to drive. The ride and the handling in the GLE is pretty disappointing. It's not a good advert for SUV ride quality. Definitely not as good as my X5. Now, next, I looked up the Mercedes GLC versus the C-Class Estate. The C-Class Estate is only four grand cheaper to buy, although it's still quite a lot, isn't it? The Estate is half a second quicker to 62. It weighs 160 kilograms less, that's two or three passengers worth, and has seven miles per gallon better economy, which is 100 miles per tank. The boot in the GLC is bigger, but seriously, the Estate, that's the one to get. Now, just to be sure, I ran the same comparison with a BMW X5 and a 530D Touring, both with the same diesel engine and both in M Sport trim. And it's a similar story. The 5 Series was about three grand cheaper and takes up similar road space and is a little quicker off the line. But the differences in CO2 and fuel consumption, even though they are massive day to day, over the course of a year, two, three years, over the lifetime of the car, it all adds up to be quite significant. So the bottom line, which may or may not surprise any of you watching this, is that SUVs aren't massively worse than estates. They're not exactly the Canyonero from The Simpsons. Remember that? In fact, they're actually close enough for supporters to justify buying them. And they do have their advantages like towing and seven seat ability. But there is no question that for most of us, they're a massive waste. We always knew this, but now we have the numbers to prove it. And I still can't get over that 17 grand price difference between the GLE and the E-Class Estate. Maybe I need to get rid of that X5, actually. But that's the issue, isn't it? It's not manufacturers forcing these things on us, it's us, the people. We want what we want and they're gonna give it to us. Humans, me, <laughs> we're wasteful. Now, looking ahead and playing devil's advocate here, as we move from the ice age and into the electric era, the format of a boxy tall vehicle actually seems to work pretty well. Sticking the batteries under the floor is a safe, space efficient way to package them into a car. And it does work well with the taller SUV stance because it gives them that low center of gravity and helps them to handle better. Plus it frees up more interior space. We've already seen this in cars like the VW ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq that's built on the same platform. The shapes may change a little into more of a one box outline like you have on the Tesla Model X or the Jaguar I-Pace, but I think that tall vehicles with a bit of ride height, well, they're here to stay, aren't they? Again, especially because that's what consumers want. I do think we're missing a massive trick here though. Where are the small, efficient electric cars? We need more electric hatchbacks. We need more electric estates, more city cars, saloons. Everybody's always banging on about cars needing to be greener and that we need to go electric. And here we are making electric SUVs and crossovers, which we know are inherently compromised. Everybody bangs on about electric cars needing more range, but you're not gonna get more range from an SUV. You're gonna get less. It just seems a bit stupid, but again, that's what people want. Cars have always been an emotional purchase, and I guess they don't have to make sense to anybody except the person that's buying them. Anyway, I guess the X5 is probably gonna have to go pretty soon, isn't it? It's off next year, and maybe my next family car won't be an SUV. Or maybe it will. I'm human too, bro. Listen, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I like giving you guys food for thought, so give me some food for thought down below in the comments. And of course, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you wanna see more great videos like this in the future, come back soon. Peace.